are ready to begin our kickoff for the Summer Food Service Program of 2015. I'm Tracy Dixon with the Nutrition Services Department here at Richland One, and we are here again to launch the statewide kickoff of the Summer Food Service Program with the State Department of Education. Today, we're going to hear from many supporters and stakeholders that graciously give of their time and resources to support healthy and nutritious meals for all children in South Carolina. For over 25 years, Richland One has provided summer meals. We are especially grateful for the continued support of our district in supporting what we do and knowing that what we do is right for all children in our district. As you know, this spirit of cooperation and support comes from the top here in Richland One and we are so honored that we have so many representatives from our district that support this mission. Following uh, the introduction here, we're gonna hear from our superintendent, Dr. Craig Witherspoon, who is going to bring you welcome to our school district. Thank you so much for being here. Following the press conference, we have with us Mr. Everett Brown. He's the a former Carolina Panthers linebacker and Mr. Everett Brown is going to participate in an activity through Fuel Up to Play 60 with our kids. At this particular site, we have 250 children registered for the Summer Food Service Program. So just please give a round of applause for this school, the outreach efforts that they provide in the community for enrichment and summer meals. So we are especially grateful for Ms. Andrews Carter Sims, the principal here, and her staff for all that they do for the children here at Burton Pack Elementary. So following the press conference, immediately following the press conference, the children will assemble for lunch, and then Mr. Everett Brown is going to lead them in an activity. We're gonna do fuel up to play 60. They're gonna eat, and then we're gonna do an exercise activity to get them motivated and moving again so that they can continue on with their academic uh, day. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome to the podium our esteemed uh, superintendent of Richland One, Dr. Craig Witherspoon. Thank you so much. Thank you and good morning. I uh, certainly want to welcome everyone here to Burton Pack Elementary School and welcome to Richland One. Um, we're a school system of about 24,000 plus students. Uh, we feed during the year uh, approximately 10,000 breakfasts per day and about 15,000 lunches per day. Uh, so we certainly understand and appreciate uh, the need to ensure that students are healthy and they're, they're, they're well fed so that their uh, young minds uh, here or, or minds in general are, uh, are certainly uh, nourished and able to ensure that the teaching and learning process uh, continues at, at high levels. Uh, and we continue to do great things in, in that regard. Wanna uh, again welcome everyone here and, and to, to say that we're, we're honored and privileged to be a part of this program because during the school our students are certainly exposed but during the summer uh, those needs continue and it's certainly incumbent on us to do what we can to partner and work together to ensure that uh, students are, are getting that nutritious meal and that learning uh, continues this part of the year as, as well. Uh, so welcome. Uh, we appreciate you being here. You're going to hear from uh, certainly the Vice Chair of uh, the Board of Commissioners of Richland County 1, Mr. Vince Ford, a little later. Uh, and we're excited that you're here and excited for this program to continue. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dr. Bowen Seabrook from the State Department of Education, and I bring you greetings on behalf of Superintendent Spearman and the Department of Education. We are delighted that you are partnering with us to ensure that no child in South Carolina goes hungry during the summer months when they no longer have access to school meals. SCDE is excited to begin its first year as the state's administrator for the USDA Summer Food Service Program, which is now housed at the Department of Education in the Office of Nutrition Programs. Will members from the Department of Education please stand? These, thank you. These are some of the folks behind the scene making it happen. Our goal is to provide services 
that ensure all children have access to services that prepare them for careers, colleges, and citizenship. This holds true for the meal program as well. During the summer months, many children are at risk for hunger, which is a severe roadblock to the learning process. We are working with our sponsors to bridge that gap when school is no longer in session and children no longer have access to school breakfast and lunch. We are happy to partner with Richland One and over 60 other sponsors throughout the state. Would our sponsors and Richland One please stand? Thank you. Thank you all for working so diligently to establish sites in communities where children can receive meals in a safe, supervised environment where they live, learn, and play. Because of you, we will be feeding thousands of children daily breakfast, lunch, and snacks. I am thankful for school meals because I too relied on summer meals during the summer months when school was no longer in session. I continued co to communicate with what we call then the lunch ladies. She knew my family and she knew our needs. Ms. Rainey Wiggins, I remember Ms. Rainey Wiggins. I would go through the line and she would make sure that I received a meal that I need. And she, she made a difference in my life and so did the summer meals. She served them with love. In our efforts to make sure that no child goes hungry this summer, we are using the media and other mediums to increase awareness about summer feeding. Families can call 1-866-HUNGRY, and I will repeat that, 1-866-HUNGRY to find a serving location in their community. Sites are open at various dates and location from June 1st, so, so we have already started, to August 30th. In closing, I solicit your support and assistance in getting the word out about summer feeding using networks, websites, and social media to let everyone know that summer food is in when school is out, and indeed, summer food rocks. Thank you. I have been given the pleasure of introducing our speaker today. I have known him as a board member for over 22 years. And in that time, he has been a staunch supporter of child nutrition. Mr. Ford was born and educated in this village, earned his bachelor's degree from my alma mater, Benedict College, and went on to do further studies at South Carolina State University. In every phase of his career, he has worked to improve the lives of children. In his capacity as executive director of the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Midlands, the James R. Clark Memorial Sickle Cell Anemia Foundation, as well as the South Carolina Commission on Alcohol and Drug Abuse, where his drug and alcohol program intervention received national recognition. He is currently employed as the Senior Vice President for Community Health Services at Palmetto Health, where he continues providing much needed health care services to thousands in the Midlands and the state of South Carolina. I can go on and on talking about Mr. Ford, but I won't do that because I want you to hear from him, not about him. Mr. Ford, my friend, my board member. <laughs> Good morning. I want you to remember 1866 Hungry. 1866 Hungry. If you have food in your fridge, 
clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and a place to sleep, you're richer than 75% of the world. If you have money in the bank, your wallet, or even some spare change, you're among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you are more blessed than the million who will not survive this week. If you've never experienced the danger of battle, the agony of imprisonment, the pains of starvation, you are more blessed than 500 million people alive and suffering. And if you can read, you're more fortunate than 3 billion people in the world who cannot read at all. So thank God for this opportunity to be here. A few years ago, I had a chance to go to Africa uh, with some seventh grade students from right here in Richland One. And I remember uh, meeting an elder. And I stuck my hand out to the elder, and he did not extend his hand back. And I thought, whoa, man, this is rough. I'm in Africa, and the elder did not extend his hand back to me. And he went on to tell me, he said, Mr. Ford, before we extend pleasantries, we always ask an important question. And the question is, how are the children? How are the children? And man, whew, boy, that stunned me when he said that to me. And I said to myself when, I, uh, when, I, when he said that to me, that's something that I'm going to make sure that I ask myself every day. How are the children in our community? And so I would say to everyone that's here that's listening, if the children in your sphere, your space, if they're doing well, that's great. But if there are children out there that are not doing as well, then I say that we need to double or redouble our efforts to make sure or to ensure that children have the ability to do well. You know, here we are in the year 2015, June 3rd. And, and, and if I were to go to the State House or anywhere in Columbia, and I'll just use Columbia, our space right here, and a stone's throw from, from the State House, the capital of the state of South Carolina, Here's what you'll find. You'll find children who are hungry. Children who will go to bed tonight who are hungry. Now think about that. Here we are in the capital city, state of South Carolina, and we have children who are hungry. That makes no sense uh, to me when I think about it. So I reflect back on the elder asking me the question, how are the children? And what I know is there are children in our community who are not doing well because they're hungry. And then you'll find children who are homeless. Uh, there was a study done not too long ago by the state paper here in Columbia, and they found that 1,000 students in this community are homeless. They're literally children who sleep outside, people who sleep from place to place, sleep in cars. Now think about that now. Here we are, a rich place um, or a well-to-do place, and we have children who are hungry and homeless right here in Columbia. South Carolina. And then if you continue with the story, you find that the children who uh, have no health care, uh, they, uh, because of the state's position on health care, not expanding Medicaid and other kind of programs, we have children and family members who are struggling in this arena as well. Hmm. Three of the most important basic things that, that a community can provide a young person. I'm glad Ms. Clark in, invited me to speak because I'm going to tell you about my story in a, in a nutshell. But, but we have children who are hungry and homeless and with no health care. And then the fourth H, if you will, will be that we have children who've given up hope. They have figured out that, that adults and caring people don't care about us. They drive right by every day in their nice fancy cars. They go to the nice places where they live and they don't care about us so they give up hope. And then we step back and we wonder why is it that children are doing the things that they're doing? It's because us blessed people, fortunate people, have decided, well, that's not my problem. I am fortunate to be a part of a community, a village, as she said, that is caring enough to stop what it's doing and take care of our most vulnerable, our children and our families. And, and this program over the summer uh, is not just a program, but it's a lifesaver. It is something that will help children uh, and families day in and day out. See, I grew up not too far from here. Um, I'm an only child. And it was just me and my mom um, when, when I was growing up. My mom and dad separated when I was five, and she worked a lot of different jobs, sometimes 12-hour days. Had it not been for the village, 
I promise you I wouldn't be standing here today. See, it did take that village to take care of me. And I remember um, many of the summer programs in Allen Benedict Court, summer feeding programs uh, for breakfast and lunch that I would uh, go to. And if it were not for that, I probably would have, uh, I don't know, I can't stand here and tell you that I would have been hungry, but it definitely helped increase the variety of foods that I was, uh, had access to. See, we always had bread. <laughs> and when you got bread, you can make a sandwich. Now, there were different kinds of sandwiches. Some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Mustard sandwiches, mayonnaise sandwiches, <laughs> ketchup sandwiches. Whatever you had there, you made a sandwich out of it. And, and that's not, you know, it, it sounds funny. We laugh about it, but it's true. But, but it's exactly what, what I did every day. So had there not been the summer feeding program in Allen Benedict Court, I would not have gotten a good variety of meal. And in fact, my first 12 years of school, from first grade to 12th grade, I ate breakfast and lunch in the cafeteria every day. Every day. Um, and it was that village that took care of me. And so I, uh, I am thankful for that. So what we're doing here uh, in this community is so important. Uh, we have made a commitment in this village, this community, that we're going to do our best to wipe out hunger uh, and to take care of children who are homeless uh, and to uh, take care of their health care needs and try to eliminate uh, them thinking that adults don't care about them. So we appreciate these partnerships uh, and people who are caring people who are willing to get involved. And, and that is so important. It's so good to see my colleague, Tamika uh, Isaac Devine here, who is a champion for, for children and for health care um, and uh, for our entire community as well. It's a pleasure to have her here. So what I've come to learn as I prepare to close, I, what I've come to learn that communities, it's really not about skill, um, that we have skill. We know how to educate. We know how to keep people healthy. We know how to do all the things that social services said we need to do. We know how to do those things, and we know how to do them well. The question becomes, are we willing to do it? It's about will, not just about skill. And we have to be willing to do it. And I'm fortunate, again, to be a part of many organizations that, that have the will uh, to get it done. As Ms. Clark mentioned, I work at a hospital. And in the hospital business, um, there's something that's real important. Uh, probably in every business, but I'll just speak of the hospital business. There's something called never events. Certain things should never happen. Never. And I couldn't help but think about when I started learning about those never events in healthcare, uh, what kind of things in our communities should never happen, and especially to children? Should never happen. As a community, we ought to get together and we ought to say, these are some never events. So I'm going to pause for a second. I want you to think about that. What should never happen to children in our community? And if I were teaching a class, I would ask you to pull out paper and pencil and write those things down. And I would encourage you that at the conclusion of this program to do that. Write down things that should never happen in a community, in particular our community. And then what I'd like for you to do is partner with other organizations and other people to make sure those things should never happen. So here's some things that I think should never happen. We should never allow a child to go home hungry. That should never happen under any set of circumstances. We should never allow a child to be homeless in our community. Should never happen. We should never allow a child to be without adequate health care. And we should never allow a child to give up hope under any set of circumstances. We ought to be the ones standing there advocating for them and ensuring that those things uh, will never happen. So as you write down your list, if I pass across again, I'd like for you to share with me what's on your list of things that should never happen. I could stay up here for much longer and share with you some things that should never, ever happen along with those four things, but many others. But as you start to write those things down and think about them, then I would encourage you to live your life make sure that those things don't happen to children and families in our community. So as I close, I close with uh, something that was said by Michael Wynn um, in 
uh, one of his books. He wrote a book called Test of Faith. Um, Michael Wynn lives in Atlanta, he speaks all over the country, and he's a great motivational speaker. Well, I read his book, Test of Faith, and he opens his book with this quote, and I love this quote. Um, Michael was speaking all over the country, and, and um, anyway, he ended up in Los Angeles, almost died uh, from actually a freak accident. He was cutting his yard, and an ant bit him, or a spider bit him. He ignored it, got to California, was lifting some weights, the weight hit his arm, and anyway, he ended up in the hospital, and almost died. While he was in the hospital, he wrote this book called Test of Faith, and he opens this book with this great quote, and the quote is this, when you are given a task, complete it. When you encounter a problem, solve it. And when you enter a competition, win it. And so I would say to this village, my village, uh, when there's a task in front of us, this task, let's complete it. When we encounter problems, and sometimes we encounter problems and things that we do, solve it. And when we enter a competition, and we're in a competition to save lives and save children, it should be our goal to win it. I was in a meeting the other day, and someone said, as I closed, someone said, you know, if we do all of this, and we save one child, then it will be all worth it. And I sat there, and I was puzzled by that comment, because I take issue with that comment. And I say to you that if we do something and we have one child that's not being taken care of, one child that's hungry or homeless or has given up hope or have no health care, we should do what we need to do to take care of that child. We shouldn't be satisfied unless every child is taking care of our community. So let's win this competition. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Robin Bailey. I'm the Southeast Regional Administrator uh, with USDA. Thank you all for the opportunity to be here to celebrate and feed our children. Before I get started, I want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Witherspoon, our principal, uh, Ms. Carter Sims, Mr. Ford, representatives from South Carolina Department of Education and Social Services, who we partner with on a daily basis to provide these programs. Without you, they would not be possible. Uh, the City of Columbia and state representatives, and also fuel up to play 60, and our former Carolina Panther, Mr. Everett Brown. Thank you all for being here. The variety of folks here today is significant because it shows how committed we are to feeding children. A number of statements that were just made just resonates with me because it's something I think about on a daily basis. I think it's just as simple as making sure that children in your community are fed this summer. We're not talking about everybody. Make sure children in your community are fed this summer. Across the nation, we have 21.4 million children who receive free and reduced price meals. In the summer months, only 3.8 million participate in the program. Bring it a little closer to home. In South Carolina, you have just over 456,000 children on free and reduced meals, and approximately 96,000 participate in the program. 96,000 participating, 456,000 with a need. Now, South Carolina's leading, don't get me wrong, you have about 21% of the children you're feeding in South Carolina, which kind of leads our, the Southeast to where I have responsibility for. But the issue comes back to what was just stated. Is that enough? And the state cannot do this alone, the feds can't do this alone. It really needs to be a partnership a village, everybody engaged in this effort. You know, the schools spend about nine months out of the year feeding the children. And we have families out there that are working very, very hard on a daily basis. But they don't make enough money to have ends meet. 
Yet in the summer months, they're asked to provide three meals, not one, three meals. And in some cases, they can't even provide that one meal in the evening. So some of the children who receive free and reduced price meals during the school year don't receive a meal in the evening. We can do better than that. There is no reason why our children should be in a situation like that. And we need everybody on board to make this happen. There's no question about that. We need the schools, and I, I think Richland 1, I think Richland 2 is also very much engaged in what we're doing here. But there are a number of schools across the state that aren't for a number of reasons, and I'm not passing any judgment around that. But those schools have the capabilities, the facilities to make this happen. And even if they can't participate in their own right, lease out the facility to allow some other sponsors to feed the children in those neighborhoods. We really need to do more around feeding our children. And I will close with a quote from the great Frederick Douglass. He stated, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men, and I'll add women to that statement. No child, zero, no child should have the burden of worrying about where their next meal is going to come from. And we as adults should not put them in that position. So thank you all very much for what you're doing. Much of what we do in Richland One depends heavily on the other stakeholders. And I'm just so happy to talk about a stakeholder, a partnership that we've developed with SUDIA, or the Southeastern United Dairy Industry Association. And they're represented here this afternoon or this morning by several members of uh, SUDIA, Fuel Up to Play 60, we have dairy farmers, and USDA as well. Our relationship with Sudia has been long-standing. This year, in addition to the Fuel Up to Play 60 awards that our schools have been granted, Sudia has provided coolers that you see displayed here on the stage. It's only a few of them, but they've donated 56 Got Milk bags and 45 rolling coolers for our summer food service program. So joining us today to present these awards, we have Michaela Mitchell, She's the manager of health and wellness, Scott and Skitty Ma Kitty Mayer <laughs> of Mayer Dairy in Newberry, South Carolina. Mr. Martin Eubanks, assistant commissioner for agricultural services, the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. Mr. Everett Brown, former NFL player with the Carolina Panthers. At this time, please help me welcome as they make their way to the podium for the presentation. <laughs> So don't go anywhere. Um, South Carolina dairy farms deliver powerful nutrition that changes lives every single day. And I'm a mom of two school-aged kids. I'm a registered dietitian, and I have the absolute honor and privilege of representing the farmers um, you know, throughout our state in a, in a variety of things that we tackle. And guys, whether I'm working with my colleagues in school nutrition who are feeding I mean, these ladies feed 16,000 lunches every day, 10,000 breakfasts, hello, <laughs> right? So whether I'm working with them, whether I'm unpacking the latest science with school nurses, answering questions from moms on our blog, all of the folks that we work with have one question, one concern that's top of mind. And that's how can we feed our kids to the best of our ability so that they can reach their full potential in life and in everything that we want them to do. It all comes down to that. Um, and so, you know, our answer to that, when you find people who are doing good work, as we have here at Richland One, you join forces, right? And you, you jump in there and you do what you can to help. And so I'm so proud that the Mayer family, this is uh, Scott and Kitty Mayer, and they have a dairy farm in South Carolina, and they're really standing here representing all of the family dairy farms in South Carolina. And they have poured um, their money into making sure that these kids who are fighting hunger have what they need over the summer. We know that milk matters. 
There's no other food that we could deliver with that meal that would give that same nutritional package, nine vitamins and minerals, all the protein that it delivers. We know that that matters for the lives of kids, and we're so proud um, that you know, we get to be a part of that. So I'm going to let the mayors present this check. Um, And as Tracy was explaining to you, um, this money, which was in excess of $14,000, was spent on coolers and cooler bags because we know kids like their milk cold, right? <laughs> Just like we all do. So in order to keep all of that nutrition that they need fresh and tasting the very best that it can for the kids, uh, this is the coolers and cooler bags that you see. That's what the money was spent on. And so we're very, very Proud to do that. Very grateful that um, Mr. Martin Eubanks, who is our Assistant Commissioner for Agriculture here in South Carolina, is here to support. And just appreciate everything that our, our heroes here at Richland One do. 300,000 meals this summer are going out the door to 160 plus sites. So they do amazing work and we're hugely blessed to be a partner of theirs and part of the work they do. So let's get a picture. <laughs> yeah, you guys. Okay, yeah. Where do you want me? I think I'm out of the place. Today was such an important day and such a special day that we decided to mark it as something memorable. We have here this morning Councilwoman Tamika Isaac Devine to present the proclamation. Thank you, Tracy. Um, just a, a point of personal privilege. Uh, I too am a, a mom of school-aged children and on Monday they started um, at one of the wonderful city parks and um, we have enjoyed a great partnership with Richmond One for many years um, but our, all of our parks are summer feeding sites and so um, just when my, my children came home um, they told me how wonderful lunch was. So um, it is certainly something as a mom to know that you're sending your children somewhere that, where they can be safe, where they will be fed, they won't be hungry, uh, but they also are receiving a nutritional meal. And you know, one of the things that we want to definitely stress is that the summer feeding program um, keeps kids um, from, from being healthy, uh, being hungry, but it also helps them health being healthy. It provides them a nutritionally based meal um, and also can supplement and, and help build strong bodies um, so that they can be productive through lots of other things. As Clark and I were talking about at the city, we also enjoy another partnership with Richland One where we, um, we, we promote reading in all of our elementary schools. And I will tell you that you have not um, seen or experienced anything until you sit down with a child that can't focus on their studies. They can't focus on reading because they're hungry. And so this is about summer feeding and making sure that our children are, are fed, but this is really providing something that helps our children 
be successful in all areas of their lives. And I, I commend Richland One, I commend the USDA and the State Department of Education because uh, without this program, a lot of our children in our community would be hungry. Um, but it is indeed my honor on behalf of our mayor and the other members of city council to present this proclamation. And uh, if you'll indulge me for a second, I just wanna make sure that I read it because there are some very important facts in this proclamation. Whereas South Carolina has more than 500,000 children that live in households below the poverty level who may, at a, who may be at a greater risk of food insecurity when schools are not in session during the summer. And whereas good nutrition is needed throughout the school year as well as during the summer months as learning and other activities continue in our schools, recreation facilities, and other programs, and whereas Richland One provides over 2.6 million lunches to its students during the school year and has provided summer meals to the community and surrounding areas for more than 25 years. And whereas Richland One is partnering with the South Carolina Department of Education to increase the number of children in the Midlands and surrounding areas that receive meals during the summer, including schools, nonprofit camps, and church programs. And whereas the City of Columbia thanks Richland One for its tenacity and dedication to feeding our children, not only in our community, but also statewide. Now, therefore, on behalf of our Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin and all the members of the City of Columbia uh, City Council, we do hereby proclaim Wednesday, June 3rd, 2015, as Summer Food Service Day in the City of Columbia, and we urge all of our citizens to recognize and participate and celebrate its observance. And Dr. Witherspoon, Mr. Ford, Ms. Clark. Hasn't it just been wonderful? All of our stakeholders, all of those that are interested in doing the right thing for children, and that's making sure that our children are well nourished every single day, every child, every day, and that's what we believe in Richland One and what we believe statewide. I wanna thank everyone again on behalf of the district. We thank everyone, of course, for their support. I wanna recognize uh, some individuals that are here today Representatives from the Inner Soul Foundation with uh, Don Staley last year. Don Staley was here and uh, was a part of the Summer Food Service kickoff. And this year, there are two representatives. Ladies, would you please stand? We have Lisa Welch and Angela O'Neill. And I thought I recognized them, but wasn't sure. <laughs> we thank you, ladies, for being here this morning as well, for your support, your continued support. Uh, there are also uh, USDA representatives that um, are here, are present as well. If you would please stand as well. <laughs> Members of the nutrition staff who've worked tirelessly behind the scenes. District representatives, we have um, Ms. Sherry Matthews Hazel, our Chief Financial Officer. <laughs> Ms. Karen York, who is our Communications Director. <laughs> and State Department, South Carolina State Department of Education. Uh, as I close, I uh, open the floor for Mr. I'm sorry, Dr. Andrew Thomas for remarks, closing remarks, and then also Ms. Anders Carter Sims, a principal here at Burton Pack Elementary. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, 
uh, on behalf of the South Carolina Department of Education and the Office of Health and Nutrition, we want to say thank you to all of the stakeholders, all of the people that are participating, all of us coming together. There's power in unity, and we understand when we unify with a common goal, and a common goal this summer is to feed all children, nothing can stop us. We are invincible, and as, uh, as Mr. Ford said, when we encounter a problem, we have found a solution. And the solution this summer is to feed all of our children. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you to all of you for being here. My name is Andres Carter Sims, principal here at Burton Pack Elementary. And I would also like to say thank you to all of our stakeholders. And on behalf of the children who are here today for Camp Until Three, having the opportunity to take advantage of all of the meals that are provided. I would like to say thank you on behalf of our children. Thank you on behalf of our community who have also been invited to participate with us every day in those feeding programs, to our families, to our nearby churches. I would just like to say thank you because all of us know that this is a needed service for our families and Burton Pack is glad to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Good morning to everyone. Um, I actually added myself on the agenda. <laughs> I had to. Um, I'm Joanne Bender, and I actually work with the South Carolina Department of Education in the Summer Food Services Program. But I work really closely with Richland One in planning this um, news conference and event. And I had to personally get up and thank um, them for helping out so much with planning of this event. Um, I personally want to thank Ms. Clark and Ms. Dixon. Um, during the plan of this event, I actually lost my father. And the day after, I actually had a total, a total wreck my car. So they jumped in and said, you know, whatever you need, Joanne, whatever we can do to make this a success, we're there for you and we'll do it. And they went way beyond my expectations and I could not sit without getting up to personally thank you all so much for doing that. Thank you so much. And um, in efforts to help us to feed all the children, as before stated, we need everybody. We need every single body to help with this huge endeavor. We have promotional products, uh, promotional items out there, brochures with the 8663 Hungry number on it. We want you all to take those brochures and um, pass them out, those flyers. Wherever you go, give those out. Um, if you need more, contact our Department of Education. We'll get you more. Um, please help us to get that information out with that number on it. That number will help access sites throughout the state. 18663-HUNGRY. Yes. OK. So um, <laughs> we're trying to get this number right. <laughs> but yes, please um, make sure you get this information out and let people know that um, this number is where they actually can call to find out about sites that are in their communities and also um, to go to our website and we'll have them listed on there as well. So please do that. Now in ending this, uh, we don't want you all to go anywhere. We have Everett Brown who's gonna come up now and give some remarks and he also is gonna lead the children and the adults in an activity. And they told me to tell you to put your milk mustache on. I don't know if you got one or not, but if you did, please put them on. Everett. Um, I first want to say thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me out to this, uh, you know, exciting time. Um, you know, I remember growing up, you know, if I had the opportunity that we have now, uh, it definitely would have bettered me as a person, better me as a, as a student, uh, had me more prepared coming off the summer, going back into the school year. Uh, you know, by having a chance to have summer feeding and, you know, keeping my body, you know, healthy and, and being able to have nutrition, because uh, that's important. So without you know, further ado, I'm going to do an activity here with the students. It will be my pleasure, my honor, if you all would join me and, and getting the students excited and getting them moving. And uh, just give them an introduction to what it means to play 60 minutes. And I think the most important part of that is stretching and getting the body ready to be active, so 
when the students come in, we're definitely going to get them moving. And uh, as I can see, you, are, <laughs> you all are getting ready. <laughs> but thanks again for having me seriously. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to interacting with the students and, and you all at the conclusion of this. Thank you.